Hey everybody, this is Mike with Fixing It With The Long Bros. Do it yourself, Fix It With The Long Bros. And I'm with uh, William uh, Macy and Melinda Downing. And uh, we are with the uh, Klamath County uh, School District. And we're going to uh, talk about uh, pre-trip. And I'll just let these guys uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and start with the uh, training. And they're going to be training my brother and me today and we're going to be driving a school bus for Clams County School District. And believe me, it's quite detailed. Okay, go right ahead, guys. Now, okay, you're on. Okay, as we approach our bus, we always want to make sure that the bus is not leaning to the left or the right. Uh, have a broken spring or a low tire. We also want to make sure that there are no leaks on the bottom of the, on the ground underneath the bus. Once again, that could be coolant, that could be oil, uh, transmission fluid. And we also want to check the exterior of our bus, making sure there is no graffiti or vandalism to our bus. If we come out and we find any of those issues, we might as well turn around, go back in and find a different vehicle. This bus is not going to work for us. Once we come up to the bus, we start at the very top and we work our way down. First thing we're doing is we are looking at all of our lights and our lenses. We are making sure that they are not cracked, broken, or missing. We then start at the top and work our way down. We make sure that our school bus sign is legible, easy to read. We look at our windshield. For our windshield, we are making sure it's clean. We're making sure that there are not rock chips or any cracks in our windshield. We then move down to our wipers. We are making sure that our wipers are present, that they appear to be secure. Next thing we see as we come down is our bus number. This one happens to be bus 46. We then go and we physically, we pull on our bumper. We make sure that it is secure. We make sure our license plate is there. Both tow hooks are present. And once again, we're down low enough. We're double checking, making sure there are no leaks underneath our engine area. From here, we're going to get ready to open the hood, but as we go by, we are grabbing all of our mirrors. Mirror brackets are securely attached, none are cracked, broken, or missing, with no missing nuts or bolts. Grab each one of these mirrors. While we're over here, we're going to get ready, and we're going to open up our hood, so we're going to release both of these. The other side, he's going to grab and make sure that that mirror is also secure. So well, we can grab that mirror on that side, making sure that it is secure once again, you know, missing nuts or bolts. From there, we're going to open up the hood just by pulling back. It does have a lock on the other side so that if the wind comes up, it won't pull the hood down on top of us. From here, we're going to move around and we're going to try to go in an order so that we don't forget and miss anything. We're going to start with the oil. We want to pull out the dipstick. We want to wipe it off. It has our little hashtag marks here. And we want to make sure that that oil is going to be within this operating level. Push it back in. all the way in to the bottom pull it out and sure enough it is in the operating level if it was not in that and it was below these we would want to make sure that we went in found the mechanics they'll give us the correct type of oil either we can put it in ourselves or our mechanics will come and add the amount of oil we want to be sure and let them know where they are at so they know about how much to add. Okay, from here, we're gonna move on up right from the oil. Next thing we find is the air compressor. Securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. This carries some in oil and it also carries air. So we wanna make sure that all of our hoses are securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. The hoses don't uh, have signs of weathering, cracking. We don't hear any leaks. We don't see any leaks. From there, we move to the alternator. Securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. 
This one, we wanna make sure that all of our wiring is secure and there are no loose wires. Next, we come down and the next thing our hands touch are our belts. Belts, we wanna make sure that it has half to three quarters inch tension. We wanna make sure that there is no cracking, no weathering, no holes in our belts. From there, as we bring our hands down, we get to the power steering box, the, the steering box. With the steering box, we are making sure it's securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. We are making sure that all hoses coming out are secure, no signs of cracking, weathering, no leaks. This one leads up to the power steering up here, and we make sure it is securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. From the other side, we will look across and we will make sure that it has adequate fluid connected here to the steering box. So from the steering box, we have our pitman arm and our drag link. We want to make sure that everything is securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, nothing is cracked, broken, that we have the pins in place and things appear to be lube. Next, we're going to go to our springs. On our springs, we want to make sure they are all there. They aren't cracked, broken, missing. They are aligned that our U-bolts are in place. They aren't cracked, broken. U-bolts. With no missing nuts or bolts. From there, we're gonna go up to our spring hangers or our spring mounts. Either one you wanna call them. They're on each side. Once again, they're not cracked, broken, and no missing nuts or bolts. As we come out, the next thing that we see is going to be our shock absorber. The shock absorber securely attached at the top and the bottom. No missing nuts or bolts, no cracks in the shock absorber, no leaks. From here, the next thing we come to, the brake chamber, securely attached. No missing nuts or bolts, no dents. All of the hoses coming off are secure. No signs of cracking, weathering. We don't hear any leaks. Up of this is what's called our slack adjuster. You want to try to pull on this front slack adjuster. It cannot pull more than three quarters of an inch on the slack adjuster. We want to make sure that the pins aren't cracked, broken, and there are no missing nuts or bolts. Next, we go to our drums and our linings. We're wanting to make sure that we don't have any uh, signs of discoloration, which would be heat damage. We want to look for contamination, such as oil. And we want to make sure that these linings are not worn dangerously thin, which would be less than one quarter of an inch. From there, we're going to bring our hands up around and we're going to come to the tires. On the tires, we look for even tread depth. We want to make sure we have four 30 seconds tread depth. I continue just to keep my hands and coming across that way I don't miss anything and forget and rub my hands around the sidewalls we're looking for chunks of rubber we are looking for bulges the next thing we come to is the rim the rim we want to make sure there is no cracks no aftermarket welds next thing we feel is we're bringing our hands inward so we don't miss anything is going to be our stem with the stem we want to make sure it has a cap and very important we want to make sure that if we were worried about the inflation of our tire that we would check it here with an air gauge. We're gonna continue working our hands in so we don't miss anything. We're gonna touch every single lug. With the lugs, we are looking for silver shavings. We are looking for rust trails. These holes could even be ovaled out. Keep working our hands in. We have our hub. All of the nuts and bolts are there. Nothing cracked, broken, or missing. We have our sight glass. In that sight glass, we see we have plenty of fluid. And once again, because we've got the fluid and a cap, we make sure we do not have any leaks. And on this side to end up with, we have our mud flap. Once again, securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. And that mud flap is not more than 10 inches off the ground. You're gonna notice that I sound like a broken record every time we are making sure securely attached no missing nuts or bolts if it carries air or it carries a, a liquid of some sort we want it we know it's going to have hoses we want to always say the condition of the hoses 
that they're not cracked they're not fraying and we also want to mention if it has a hose and it has air or fluid it could have a leak so we need to identify are we listening for a leak looking for a leak another thing we want to try and avoid is using the word good your opinion of good my opinion of good could be totally different yours could be it has to be perfected mine could be eh, it's all right it passes it'll be good enough till tomorrow so we always need to make sure that we are saying that it's an operating level what the actual condition is of that item from here we've just got a couple of other things on the other side that are different from this side we look across we make sure that the power steering it is with rating level once again we would make sure that that was securely attached no missing nuts or bolts all hoses coming off appear to be secure and that we don't see any leaks the hoses don't look like they're cracked or they're weathered next i always just check to make sure that i have plenty of uh, window wiping fluid and up here to our uh, coolant making sure it's securely attached no missing nuts or bolts on this one we're going to notice it's actually below the cold fill line and this is cold so before we leave today we're going to want to make sure that we put enough coolant in that it's within the operating level because this is actually below it but once again securely attached no missing nuts or bolts our lids on all of our hoses coming off are secure no signs of cracking weathering no leaks at this point in time in your regular pre-trip you would again go down since we don't have the steering box and all of the steering linkage you would just start at your springs once again making sure they're not cracked broken or missing making sure your u-bolts are in place no missing nuts or bolts the spring mounts or hangers are securely attached no missing nuts or bolts they're not broken next thing you come to would once again be your brake chambers no cracks no dents securely attached no missing nuts or bolts your hose securely attached no cracking no weathering we don't hear any leaks we can't see our tires so we'd want to turn our tire once again checking your drums your linings and then of course the same as we did on the other side with our tire now we're going to close the hood up and i'm going to have bill help me uh, this does have this latch here that keeps it so that once again this doesn't fall on your head when you're trying to do your pre-trip and bill's going to show us the easiest way to get this to release and to put the hood down cool it <laughs> what i'm cool thank you yeah yeah that's her i'm not testing you Bill's applying the uh, level for the coolant, which uh, is important. You don't want your bus overheating. Right, Bill? That's right. Anytime you have any doubts, go to one of the mechanics, make sure you get the proper fluid for the proper application. They're more than willing to stop what they're doing and give you a hand. You don't even have to tip them. No. Did you ask for a hand? That's okay. your lock release. Unlock it. Grab it right here. And just give her a pull. Anytime I go past on my bus, I always grab the mirrors. That helps me develop the habit. After we've done our engine area, we're going to move to the driver's side. And I start with just a visual. And I start at the very top and I work my way down so once again I don't miss anything. We have two yellow and one red clearance marker. We're once again making sure they're not cracked, broken, or missing. We make sure our emergency exits are marked. Our windows aren't broken. We make sure we have our stop sign, which we will be checking at a later time that it works. Bus 46, 
our left turn signal and our Klamath County School District sign. We'll be checking our storage compartment, but we are visually making sure we have one yellow, one red reflector. Where's that? The very back of the bus back here. Yellow. 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 And the red. Reflectors. And those are your reflectors. And then also you just want to make sure that your bus, any body damage that you see, if you have any new damage on that bus or any damage to that bus that was not already recorded, you want to make sure that you make a note of it so that if something happens, something comes back, we know that that damage is on that bus and when it occurred. Battery compartment. We are just making sure that the batteries are secure and that we don't see any corrosion on our battery terminals. Pretty short and sweet. Our air drains, most important in the evenings and especially in our colder weather. You open each one. Just making sure that you do not feel any uh, liquid at all coming out of that. If you did, you'd keep that open until it was completely dry. Once again, this is usually in the evenings that we want to check that the most because it's after you've ran. Next, we're going to open one of our compartments. In our storage compartments, we are making sure that this sounds crazy, but that there are no people. <laughs> it's a great place for a homeless person to get out of the weather. It's dry. So we're making sure there's no people, no explosives, nothing flammable. If we could see all the way through to the other side, we'd only have to open one. But because our drive line and exhaust run through the middle here, we'll also be opening the other side. But you check all the way through. Let that fall. Make sure it's secure. This one we don't need to open again because we've already checked it, but we make sure that it's secure. From here, we're going to be getting underneath the bus as far as looking. We're going to get down on our knees. And we're going to start first of all with our exhaust. With the exhaust, we're making sure securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts. We are making sure that we don't see any rust trails or rust holes that would be the sign that we would have a leak we are moving to our drive line making sure that the drive line is securely attached no missing nuts or bolts the drive line guards and hangers securely attached no missing nuts or bolts making sure that the drive line at the u-joint is securely attached no missing nuts or bolts and those little caps on that joint, we want to make sure that those caps are present, not cracked, broken, or missing. Now this, guys, for this first time, this is where I actually, because so many people do not know what a slack adjuster is, uh -huh. that I would normally go over and point to things and talk from underneath the bus pointing out things so that they know what they're looking at over there on that other side. Now, when you guys are just doing it, you're gonna be right here and we're just gonna be looking. But for this first time through, I like to get under the bus so that I can point to things for you guys. With you. And you, you see what you're looking at. Okay. okay, go ahead. Okay, underneath the bus, you are going to be over on the other side and actually looking across so that you can see the inside. We're again gonna start here at their drums and our linings, making sure there's nothing cracked, broken, or missing. We are once again looking for heat, which would be uh, discoloration. We're looking for contamination, oil and grease. And we're making sure once again, these linings are not worn dangerously thin, which is less than one quarter of an inch. We're gonna continue to work our way out towards the other side of the bus. Now where's the slack adjuster? The slack adjuster is going to be right here. And so what we're going to start with is we're going to start with the air chamber. Securely attached. No missing nuts or bolts. No dents. 
making sure that all of the hoses coming off securely attached no signs of weathering cracking we don't hear any leaks and then going to this so this is your slack adjuster with the parking brake pulled this slack adjuster should be at a 90 degree angle so we are making sure that angle is there always at least 90 making sure that the rods and the pins they aren't cracked broken missing and there is no missing nuts or bolts from there then we're actually going to move up towards the outside of the bus from the other side so if that didn't make sense what when we hey bill yo so go over to the other side for me for a minute so normally what you would be doing is Bill would be right there where the exhaust is and he would be staring across at this and that's when he would be saying I'm checking the brake drums the brake linings and all the information we covered there and he's working his way out if you're your bus driver checking yes not you don't have to get under here and no we no. never want you actually underneath the bus okay. you're just going to be down you're going to be looking across and saying what you see from there today us under here is just to actually point things out because if you don't know what you're looking at how can you inspect them if bill is just over there standing and he has this memorized but he doesn't have a clue in the world what anything is it's not doing him any good right so that's the point today of us just being here pointing out everything for the first time to a newcomer so that they know staying out from underneath the bus from that side what they're looking at from here on out everything else that we would check uh we will check from that actual side because we can see it but obviously if you're standing over there you can't see the brake chamber you can't see the drums and the linings on that wheel from that side does that make Got sense it. yes okay here Kay. we go <laughs> did you uh look at all these lines under here so I, is this the uh that the the bright silver one is your exhaust no this oh no none of that you don't have to worry about okay now these are the blocks right the chalks as far as you have in that wheel chalk just now been looking across there once again like i say checking the drums the linings on that opposite side uh and checking the chambers the slack adjuster and all of those lines and now we're going to come up here and once again we are working our way out so that we don't miss anything first thing we see are all of our springs once again we're checking our springs making sure they are all aligned not a cracked broken or missing we are also checking our spring mounts making sure they're securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, they're not cracked or broken. We've got a front mount and a back. And on this, we cannot see the U-bolts, but we do want to state that if we could see the U-bolts, we would be making sure they weren't cracked, broken, with no missing nuts or bolts. Underneath the springs is the torque arm. On this torque arm, once again, making sure it's securely attached. No Point to the torque arm again. Or bolts, and that it is not cracked, broken, or missing. So that's very important to keep saying it's not all all the nuts, bolts, and are not and missing over. and not cracked, and the lines are good. You got to keep saying that. And once again, we, good. we don't use the term good because your idea of good. Bill's idea of good, my idea of good, we can all three have different opinions of that word. Yeah. So we want to say specifically why it passes or why it does not pass. Yeah. Okay, so as we come out, once again, like I say, we're working our way out, we come to tires. We stop, we run our hand uh, between the tires. We are making sure they aren't touching, which would be signs of a low tire. We're also making sure there's not rock or garbage anything lodged between the tires come on to the top even tread depth uh, 230 seconds tread depth required making sure we have that you're going to notice that we have studs uh, school buses are allowed to have studs 12 months of the year we don't have to have them on and off at different dates once again coming across checking the sidewalls we are looking for bulges chunks of rubber cracking 
Next we come to is the rim. No aftermarket welds, no cracks, no dings. Next thing we fill is again our stem, making sure it has a cap. Once again, making sure and mentioning if we were worried about inflation, we would check it here with an air gauge. And then again, touching every single lug nut, making sure they are tight, making sure we don't see signs of silver shavings, rust trails, oval out hubs. Next thing we come to is our hub, making sure the gasket's there, there's not any leaks, making sure that all of our bolts are there. Uh, and if this, there was ever a sight glass here, we would want to mention that if the, that sight glass was there, that it had plenty of fluid. And last but not least, again, we have our mud flap securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, at least 10 inches off the ground. Anything to add? We got it covered. Okay. <laughs> You're just a world of information. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once again, we're at the Get back of the bus. Get here. Real similar to how we did the front of the bus, starting at the top, working our way down, looking at all of our lights and lenses. Nothing cracked, broken, or missing. Making sure that our backup camera securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, that it appears clean. Our school bus sign is legible. Emergency door is marked and legible. Glass is not broken. This glass could definitely be cleaned if we would want to do that. <laughs> uh, the next thing we see is our unlawful to pass when red lights flash. We want that sign to be legible. Our bus number, bus 46. We always want to make sure we have our two red reflectors here and here we want to make sure again that we have our license plate that our bumper and we want to physically pull it is there secure and our tow hooks are secure and before leaving we want to open this door and make sure that for emergency personnel it does open we'll be checking it from the inside and making sure that the buzzer buzzes when that opens. We are now going to move to the side of the bus. We're going to do just like we did the other side. We are once again going to make sure that our two clearance markers, we have one red, two yellow. Lenses aren't cracked, broken, missing. Oh, I never saw those over there. The emergency exits are marked. The windows aren't cracked or broken. Klamath County School District, bus 46. The uh, right turn signal is present, not cracked or broken. Once again, the general body and paint condition. We aren't seeing uh, any scratches, no dents on our bus. We have our yellow reflector, our red reflector. From here, we're going to move to where we put in our propane. We want to state that it is labeled, the door is secure, and at this entrance level, we want to just state that we're smelling and we're listening. We're obviously not going to see a fuel leak, so we've got to smell and listen. Of course, you put your fuel in here, so of course we know we have fuel tanks. On this, our fuel tanks are halfway under the bus. Once again, for the most part, we don't want you under that bus but we want to state that we would be looking, making sure we don't hear any leaks, making sure we don't smell any leaks, and if uh, requested, we would want to go under, make sure that those tanks were securely attached with no missing nuts or bolts. But because they are so far under, we're not gonna crawl under there, but we are going to listen and we are going to smell. Again, this gives us a very good view of our exhaust. Once again, securely attached, no missing nuts or bolts, uh, making sure we do not see rust trails or rust holes. We are also checking our frame to body. We are making sure that we don't see any missing nuts or bolts, 
We don't see any cracks in that rail. We don't see any aftermarket welds. And that is what you're going to check for uh, your body to frame. At this point in time, in your normal pre-trip, we would do just like we did before. We would be getting on our knees, looking across, and checking the drums, the linings, the chamber, and then coming to here and checking all of our springs, torque arm, everything just like we did on the other side. For the sake of time, if you know how to do it on the left side, you're going to do everything the same on the right side. There's no different parts. Okay, from here, once again, we remember we couldn't see on this side. We're going to open it. We're going to verify that there are no people, no explosives, nothing flammable. You will find chains usually underneath this for our buses, so for in the weather. And that is just fine. Making sure it's secure. Making sure it's secure. From here, we're going to go and we're going to get on the bus. We're going to check and make sure that our glass is cracked, faded, fogged, it's clean. We want to open it and make sure that all of the rubbers are there. They're not torn. And we want to make sure that the bus open and closes, that the hinges aren't cracked or broken. We then want to look at our step well area. We do not want to have any tripping hazards. That could include torn rubber. It could include screws that are sticking up. We are also looking at that step well light, making sure that it is not cracked, broken, or missing. And last but not least, we're grabbing and making sure that that handrail is securely attached. No missing nuts or bolts. And we want to physically pull on it, not just observe it. From here, we're going to step inside the bus. Okay. 